is Jody Amen, and today I have a special treat for you. It's Gail Suzanne is here with me today. She's a life coach, and she's experienced so many hardships in her life, and it made her who she is today. And I'm going to ask her a little bit more about that. And now she brings that hope, that healing hope to a lot of other people that she works with. She's written a book, and she's a speaker, and she's just a really kind-hearted, beautiful person. So I'm so happy to have Gail here today. Thanks so much for coming, Gail. Hi, thank you so much. I am so thrilled to be here. So thrilled. Great. Hold up your book. It's called It's the Little Things. It's my little book. It's, it's the little things, the cute little, cute little one, and I, that's you, I'm right? That's you on the That is me when I was seven years old, and I still have the same hairdo today. So, <laughs> so Gail uses a lot of humor in her work in helping people, uh, even in, you know, really dark times, and, and that's why I relate so much to Gail, because I use a lot of humor, too. Mm -hmm. But if you're interested in this book, it's, a, it's 50 short stories of Gail in, from Gail's life kind of like a chicken soup for the soul, just stories that um, touch us, make us laugh, make us cry. And, and uh, I'm, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So, but Gail, I'm so glad that I talked to you today because I love talking to, you know, kind of soul sisters who are doing this work. And because it really is such a, you know, we just feel so guided really to, to, to do what we do. Do you feel that? Oh, absolutely. 100%. My, my passion and my goal is to really help women who have struggled in their lives, either from a rough childhood or a battered relationship, something to give them more confidence, more self-esteem, and to have them have hope for a beautiful life, that it is attainable, that you anybody can have it, whether you had a rough start or a great start or a rough middle. Um, I'm so passionate about that. And, and talking with you is, is so wonderful because I think this message really needs to be shared because there's a lot of hurting people out there that just uh, think I'm going to live a subpar life. And that's not, it's not the truth. Yeah. It's hard to hear that because people work really hard on trying to push past, you know, troubled times and, and difficulty from the past and a horrible abuse. And they try so hard and they, they're not able to get past it at this point yet, you know, but they've worked hard for years trying to. And so when they hear those kind of messages of hope, you probably know exactly what I'm going to say next, what they do when they hear those hope, they tend to judge themselves because they're like, I've tried or um, like, what do you say to those people who say I tried and maybe it's not for me and what's wrong with me if other people could do it, why can't I? What, are, what, what in your heart do you want to say? Because I think this is the... Well, I think the core is that people feel that they're not worthy and they're not, they're not willing to give themselves a real shot at committing to taking care of themselves and, and improving their self-esteem. So what I would tell them is that you are just as beautiful and unique as your beautiful neighbor next door. You may not look the same, you may not make the same amount of money, you may not have had the same history, you may not have the same education, but I believe in my heart God did not make junk. So you are a beautiful soul within yourself. You don't have to compare yourself, you don't have to think that I wish I had this, I wish I had that. We all are born with our unique talents and gifts. And I would tell them to focus on that and to talk positively about themselves because of those positive things that they have to start there to start with what we tell ourselves and what how we talk to ourselves because i think that is the most pivotal thing that we all have control over how we talk to ourselves how we are kind to ourselves and to to try to get the negative out and to appreciate our gifts and our uniqueness i think this is so hard you know that's what when i'm sitting with people and i was just sitting with a woman and She's had a lot of horrible stuff happen to her this year, like so much unfair and, and people being so mean. And she doesn't deserve any of it, you know? And she just sat on my couch just now. This is an hour ago. Sat on my couch and was like, I hate myself for being so sad. And I'm, and, and you know, like, so they, they, um, the, the self judgment and the negativity is so pervasive and huge. And I feel like, not only has she been hurt by all these people, but this negative self-judgment on herself, it's like, maybe it's like 10 times in it 
you know, um, what she's feeling. And so I, I really can relate to that. Like what we say to ourselves really can make a situation so much more heavy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the things in my book, and it's just a short chapter, but it has garnered so much attention by people that I go out and speak with or who have read the book. It's just a thing that says, thank you and no, but. So when a woman gives a woman a compliment, if I say to you, you have the most beautiful smile or your, your hair is beautiful, you might say to me, thank you, but I had braces, but which is what you just said to me. So instead of Funny. doing that, just say thank you and then zip it, be quiet, stop. Or smile bigger. Yeah, smile bigger, but receive it. Mm -hmm. Say thank you that, for my beautiful smile or thank you and then don't say anything negative because that but that we say thank you but oh you look beautiful in that outfit oh thank you but i need to lose 10 more pounds or thank you my hair is too frizzy women do that all the time we don't learn to receive the goodness or the nuggets of goodness that are in the world because there's so much negativity so yeah. when somebody does say something nice say thank you and take a minute and receive it because the person that's telling you that wants to show you that they care and wants to lift you up and encourage you. So in order, you know, for women to be that, sorry, you know, I, I just yeah. think it's, so, it's such a simple, simple, simple thing, but we take a compliment when you get it. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it is very hard to do. I heard once, I heard a speaker once say that if somebody can't take a compliment, like if I'm the giver of a compliment and someone can't take it and that's everyone, right? In our culture, basically, you know, the, you know, oh, whatever. Um, they need it more. They need more compliments. So anytime I try to give someone a compliment and they don't accept it, I know that they need more compliments. They just need a lot more acknowledgement. They've been very devalued in their life. And it's cultural. They, like, really, we are enculturated to devalue ourselves because we have all these expectations and standards that we have to live up to and there's no way we could live up to them. So we're constantly not feeling enough and we're not enough and we're not enough. And so we're judging ourselves so much in this culture. So when we hear those things and we know that we're not living up to all these standards, like we're pretty and thin and young and perfect and rich and whatever. And when we're not living up to all that stuff, we feel like, um, that we're less than and so we don't deserve those compliments and so we're encultured to be like that and so we all oh, have this you know self-esteem stuff going on so i just go around giving people compliments as much as i possibly can <laughs> we all need it so bad yeah. and the more they deflect the more i give them compliments yeah yeah, yeah it's so true i think you do that too you're like you're beautiful you're just yeah. Well, you are, but you know, but it's, it's so important to encourage one another as women. So important rather than to look at that scar that somebody has, look at the thing that they have that's, that stands out and is beautiful. Yeah. Lord knows we all need more encouragement and support for sure. We do. I, I, I wonder like, what would it be like if we just all valued each other more? Like we all just show, acknowledge each other. I really think that healing happens with acknowledgement. You know, that's the healing. And acknowledgement could look at a lot of different things. It could look like gratitude or appreciation um, or, um, or compliments or someone noticing us or someone caring or compassion, right? And that's just where we heal. And the opposite of that all is, you know, guilt and judgment and fear. Fear. Yeah. Fear is a huge one. Do you see that with a lot of people you were, a lot of women you work with? Oh, so much. Men, women, the fear of stepping out, the fear of trying something new, the fear of going somewhere alone, the fear, of, I mean, fear just stops so many people. And, you know, I really, that's one of my biggest things is I try to help them through my little baby steps to get through. So fear of setting boundaries. A lot of people that have been rejected um, or abused or very fearful moving forward to set a boundary and just say, no, this is not okay. I'm not going to accept this. Why do you think that is? For rejection. I think, I think they're afraid of rejection. If I say no, and this particular thing, the person's going to leave me and I'm going to be alone and I'm going to be abandoned. And 
you know, one of the biggest things that I really believe is that women, especially when they're on their own, they need to fill their own love tank. They need to take some time if they hadn't gotten love from other people to learn how to love themselves and fill their tank. And I say love tank, meaning that, you know, every baby's born perfectly perfect and a hundred percent loved. And somewhere along the way, you know, the love tank may be chipped away and it's a smaller, smaller, smaller. Then by the time we get out of a relationship, there's not much there. So as an adult, we need to learn how to give ourselves that love that we so desperately crave. And then once we do that, it's easier to set boundaries. It's easier to let things go because we know we are okay and whole on our own. Mm, beautiful. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. So hard to do, but it's so worth it. Why do, what makes it hard, do you think? Why do you think people are, have the barriers to doing that? What's hard about it? Because we're not- I always think about it. it. It's, it's something so foreign to us. When I first started to love myself, it was after my divorce, I was in my 30s. I had a really bad childhood. I had an alcoholic mother. I was bullied a lot, sexually abused. It was just a really, really rough childhood. And I got married and I had a daughter and I thought everything was gonna be great and turned around, but I just stuffed everything. I never dealt with it. Mm -hmm. So once we got divorced, I started you know, researching, going to counseling, learning things about I needed to take care of myself because I abandoned myself my whole life and it was so hard for me the question you asked way back when was why was it so hard it was hard for me because I was so used to everybody putting me down mm. and saying negative things and treating me as if I was invisible or I was no good that the the things that I did do for myself that I started like giving myself little flowers from the grocery store or you know just taking care going out for an ice cream when I felt like it or just doing fun things I felt guilty Mm. Like, I don't deserve this. I don't, you know, nobody else treated me like this. Why am I treating myself like this? So it took me a while to learn that it was okay to self-love. I thought it was selfish, you know, because I had a daughter and I had other people I had to take care of. Why am I taking care of myself? But if I don't take care of myself, then I can't take care of my daughter. I can't take care of anybody else. So I had mm. to learn that, that it was so important for me to put myself first not in a selfish way, but in a self-caring way. Mm -hmm. My health, my, uh, you know, making sure I had a good job, making sure that I did what I could so that I was healthy mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. It's hard because I think that, you know, sometimes people abuse us or put us down or, keep, you know, have, have taught us like it, anytime we stand up for ourselves or it's so subjugated, like it's so put down, uh, and treated like it's like gaslighted. So you're, if you stand up for yourself or do something for yourself, you're gaslighted thinking that it's selfish and that it's like crazy and that it's like horrible thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, we grew up feeling like it's a horrible thing to care for ourselves or have compassion for ourselves. Cause it's like you said, and that, like, and that's such a struggle, right? That it, that you have to rethink those beliefs that self-care is selfish it's and that's a, because so to be self-care seems so wrong and um evil in a way like that's been taught how did you let go of that well it's interesting because when i started setting boundaries and i started i was in kind of a rough place and i had a lot of toxic people around me so the people that were negative and the people that were always used to me being a yes person, yes, 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 I started standing up for myself with things that I really felt in my heart were not good for me. And they, they disappeared from my life. And that yeah. is one thing that I had to accept was that I had to get rid of the negative people that would bring me down or the toxic people or the people that complained about me because the people that really loved me we're going, yay, she's self-caring. Yay, she's finally taking care of herself. And the people that wanted me to be who they wanted me to be and were criticizing me didn't want me to love myself because they would be not number one anymore. So I had to be willing to let some people go. And my circle got smaller. Yeah. But my circle got full of quality, quality people, 
only people I would let in my life were people that were kind to me, that were good to me, that would lift me up and support me and be honest, not people that would knock me down, criticize me, hurt me. So it was a transition. It absolutely was. And, you know, my big circle got very, very small, but that small circle loved me. Mm. wanted the best for me and they thought self-care was a good thing so yes. I, I I totally 100% believe that when you have good people in your life they want you to love yourself yeah what if you have a client who has people because I have this a lot you probably have experienced this but a client who's got people that they um, don't want to get rid of you know, the, uh, they, they could recognize that the other person has limits they still want the relationship but they know that that person sometimes can be threatened by um, them feel threatened mm. that, um, by them caring for themselves. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I, I absolutely do. My, my time. mother and I had this kind of relationship because I didn't, my mother and I didn't talk for a lot of years. She mm -hmm. struggled with alcohol and later drugs. And I had to come to a place of peace with her because she would put me down and she would say negative comments constantly. And I had to figure out a way to have her in my life, but not have her so that she would hurt me. Mm. So, you know, Can you there's bottle a that. Can you bottle that? Cause I know a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> need a little dose of that. I'm, Cause that's very difficult. Yeah. Say more. I'm, I'm so well, I guess saying it. there were, there were trigger points that we had. Yeah. So I made a decision to change the subject if we ever got on a trigger point or to, uh, you know, uh, try to get some common ground with her. Like we both like, like cats. So when we would talk on the phone, instead of her um, talking about me being single and why haven't I found a man yet and what's wrong with me, I would switch the subject and say, my, I went out with uh, some friends the other day. I had a great time. How's your cat doing? Or how was that, you know, dinner you made the other night? I would kind of not be rude and not, not talk to her about it, but I would kind of change the situation or change the subject. Something that she and I had that we could laugh about, that we could really get in touch with each other about, that we could really relate to. And, not and there's no baggage. Her. Yeah. There's no baggage. And also I learned, have you ever heard of the, the armored shield or the bubble wrap? <laughs> yeah. I use an igloo. Yeah, like when you're with someone that might hurt you, to visualize yourself in bubble wrap or a shield and say, this person's not going to get to my heart. They may say what they're going to say. I'm not going to engage in it. I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. you know, get involved with it. But let, it, let them pop off, pop off of me with my bubble wrap. They're yeah. not going to get to my heart because I know myself and I care about myself. So I'm not going to let them hurt me. Yeah, so I can say what they want to say. I'm just not going to engage. Say, okay, I hear what you're saying, and then move on to something else that you have in common ground. I, I think it's a it's a diversion, but it's a way to keep someone in your life and not to get rid of them, but you know, to find ways that work to adapt. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, Gail, because I think people really want to be able to do that. You know, how to not to have to cut everybody out because they, you know. Um, some people are, are not malicious because they want to be malicious. They're malicious because they're limited. It's not okay that they're doing it and it's so hurtful and I want people to have compassion for themselves. But, um, but yeah, but, um, but it's, I, there's an important piece. Sometimes we could be distant from people and sometimes we decide that we don't want to be. And so there's a, there is a way to do it. So I'm so glad that you shared that. Awesome. Kel, this is awesome. <laughs> so many little tricks. But, you know, had I known what I know now, way back when, um, I think my whole life would have been different. And this is why I'm so passionate about these little teeny weeny things of what, what to do in this situation or because they worked for me. But it took me 35 years to learn some of the things that I've learned. So, you know, if I could give one woman just a little tip about saying thank you and receive it or, or just, you know, the cookies are burning. I got to get off the phone, you know, in order to not talk about that topic <laughs> or I'm going to put my bubble wrap on. You know, there's so many little things that we can do to improve our lives. I think I, that's, a, that's where I'm at too, because I feel like well, I want to take people the shortcut. 
you know, like you and me, I mean, some people and a lot of people go the long way around and some people are in the long way and they're just like, all right, can I just have a shortcut already? And I'm like, I got the shortcut. And that's what I feel like you're saying, you know, with my book, I have a book, you one anxiety zero. And with my book, it's like, this is a shortcut. Let's get you better. Like enough. Because sometimes I think that we have to, this is our spiritual journey, right? We have to go through this stuff and it, you know, but we could shorten that, <laughs> the suffering. We could totally shorten this. We have free will. And, um, and so I really appreciate that you're like, okay, I did the hard work. Let's get some people easier. And it used to be, I think that the, um, the consciousness used to be like, we have to have some kind of wall or some kind of conflict so we could open up and grow. And I think the world's changing a little bit. And I think that we could learn those lessons without so much hardship now. I think it's a, it's a different kind of world and consciousness. And so um, I'm so appreciative that you're the kind of person out there being like, we don't have, you don't have to, let's just get you better. Like <laughs> the wall. And but I think we're in a new era now that we don't have to have the rub and we could get the polish yeah. because we could either learn from others, do a shortcut or change our mindset Mm -hmm. and totally skip a lot of hardship um, on the way to healing uh, that, that, you know, in the past, like the world consciousness, we had to go through that hardship. Now it's like, let's change your mindset and skip it all. <laughs> like the wrinkle in time, you yeah. know, like if you do the wrinkle and you just pass by it, that's what, that's what, uh, that's what I think we're, we're standing for. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the simplest things that people may not even think of, you know, just like a, a little sentence can change somebody's life. Oh, yeah. you, you know, like your book, like my book, you know, there have been people that have said to me, wow, I, you know, one woman in particular, she had had a really rough time of it her whole life. And she's a very quiet, meek woman and lived by herself. And she worked for the post office for 30 something years. She worked on the second shift. So she was by herself. And I talked to her a little bit about, um, and a woman I didn't even know, but she wrote me a letter because of the book. She says, your book changed my life. And I said, well, how so? And she said, well, I'm working at the post office and somebody was retiring and nobody wanted to do a retirement party for her. So after everybody said no, she said, well, I volunteered. I stepped out of my box and I went through the fear and I volunteered to throw this party for her. And she says, do you know what now, a year later, everybody's asking me to do the retirement parties or their birthday parties or whatever, because I did such a good job. So she's made more connections at work, she's got more confidence, and it's just a little thing, like step out of the box and say yes, a teeny weeny little thing, but it was her and her mindset and she committed and she did it. And her life is you know, different now because of it. It's so awesome. It's the little things that mean the most. It's a book. <laughs> planting the seed, you know, if people who have been there plant a little seed into someone else, can you imagine one little seed to every person, get one little seed, how much they can grow and how much better they can feel about their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for doing what you do. So happy that you're there and you're and you just transformed what happened to you until such a gift for other people. Thank you. Yeah, it's just really, I'm honored to, to know you and, and see, you know, the work that you're doing and how happy it's making you. Yeah, it is. Because it is changing. You know, when you, when you are um, feeling so bad and I was suicidal at age 12 and feeling like I was put on this earth to be um, thrown, up, thrown away, I felt like it was a piece yeah. of trash. And now to be 51 years old and to know that there are answers and that I have a voice and that's pretty much all I have is to be able to share what I know and how I got from that terrible place to a wonderful place now. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. To just share that hope with people, to give them that glimmer of, wow, I can set, set my goals and I can do them or I can love myself and it's okay and I can get out of that awful relationship because I deserve it. I want to be a role model for my children. So many things that people can, you know, they may lose sight of because their life has been clouded over by negativity. So I'm so honored to be able to speak to people and to speak with you and just learn, learn from other people and just make connections all over the world because it's, it's a worldwide thing. And women, boy, we deserve it.
we juggle things, we work hard, we, <laughs> we do, I mean, you know. We do. That's my husband true. can like talk on the phone and that's it. I can talk on the phone, I can cook dinner, I can wash the floor, I can, <laughs> we all know. I know. I don't think any men out there, but you know, <laughs> we're amazing and it's about time we celebrate ourselves. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to talk to you today. Uh, Gail, it's just been so wonderful. Everybody, again, I'm Jody Aim, and this is Gail Suzanne. And tell them how to find you, Gail, if they want to find you. Okay, my website is www.gailsuzanne.com, and it's G A Y L E with a Y, S U Z A N N E. And my book is on Amazon. It's called It's in the Little Things. It's available on Amazon and on Kindle. Oh, let me put my book up. Here's my book. And this actually was my mother painted this uh, cover years ago when I was like 10 years old and she passed away a few years ago when I wrote the book. I'm like, this is the perfect cover, um, you know, just showing of yeah. forgiveness and showing of letting go. And, um, you know, it, it's my heart and soul in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Jody. Thank Thanks, you. Gail, so much. And you'll see all those links below the video. So you, you could, it'd be easy to find her. All right, Gail, I could talk to you forever. Okay. <laughs> you too. Thank you. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll see you soon. Thank you, everyone, for watching. You could subscribe to my channel um, or subscribe to my blog also and uh, find me on Facebook and everything and share this video with all your friends. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.